this is the steward, faithful and prudent, whom the Lord set over his household, to give them their allowance of food at the proper time. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. As we come together to offer this holy sacrifice, we keep the memorial of St. Francis de Sales, Bishop and Doctor of the Church. He lived during the time of the Reformation in the 16th century. He was appointed by the church to be the Bishop of Geneva, but the civil authorities, which had embraced the Protestant Reformation, did not allow him to enter the city. So he took up his residence in Annecy, in France, not far from Geneva, and there he carried out a pastoral mission to the people in that area, confirming them in their Catholic faith. He was also a great spiritual director, and his letters to a certain woman were collected into what has become one of the greatest spiritual classics, Introduction to the Devout Life which speaks of how a lay person, not being a priest or a religious, is called to be a saint, to have the holiness of any bishop or priest or religious. He's known as the gentle doctor because he emphasizes how God's grace works gently in our hearts and that as a result, we also should be gentle with ourselves. Let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who for the salvation of souls willed that the bishop, St. Francis de Sales, become all things to all people, graciously grant that following his example, we may always display the gentleness of your charity in the service of our neighbor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. All the tribes of Israel came to David in Hebron and said, Here we are, your bone and your flesh. In days past, when Saul was our king, it was you who led the children of Israel out and brought them back. And the Lord said to you, You shall shepherd my people Israel and shall be commander of Israel. When all the elders of Israel came to David in Hebron, King David made an agreement with them there before the Lord, and they anointed him king of Israel. David was 30 years old when he became king, and he reigned for 40 years, seven years and six months in Hebron over Judah, and 33 years in Jerusalem over all Israel and Judah. Then the king and his men set out for Jerusalem against the Jebusites who inhabited the region. David was told, you cannot enter here, the blind and the lame will drive you away, which was their way of saying, David cannot enter here. But David did take the stronghold of Zion, which is the city of David. David grew steadily more powerful for the Lord of hosts was with him. The word of the Lord. My faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. My faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. Once you spoke in a vision and to your faithful ones you said, on a champion I have placed a crown, over the people I have set a youth. My faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. I have found David, my servant, 
With my holy oil I have anointed him, that my hand may always be with him, and that my arm may make him strong. My faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. My faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him, and through my name shall his horn be exalted. I will set his hand upon the sea, his right hand upon the rivers. My faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. Alleluia, alleluia. Our Savior Jesus Christ has destroyed death and brought life to light through the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The scribes who had come from Jerusalem said of Jesus, he is possessed by Beelzebul, and by the prince of demons, he drives out demons. Summoning them, he began to speak to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand. And that is the end of him. But no one can enter a strong man's house to plunder his property unless he first ties up the strong man. Then he can plunder his house. Amen, I say to you, all sins and all blasphemies that people utter will be forgiven them. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an everlasting sin. For they had said, he has an unclean spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an everlasting sin. It seems on the face of it to be disproportionate that a finite creature by the use of its will can come either to everlasting life or everlasting sin. It doesn't seem that anything we do can have such a great consequence. And yet the scriptures tell us that it does. The gift of free choice is a wonderful gift, an awesome gift, but in a certain sense we might say a terrifying gift. Because how we use it has everlasting consequences. Now sometimes we might think that God gives us a freedom of choice and then it's distant. Sort of like a person who is watching us from a distance, maybe with their hands folded, that is, unengaged with us, and is just waiting to see, okay, how will you choose? But this is, this does not accord with reality. God is intimately involved in our lives to assist us to use our freedom well so that it leads to everlasting 
life rather than everlasting sin. And he does it in such a way that he does not deprive us of our freedom, but rather he strengthens our freedom to choose what is good and life-giving rather than that which diminishes life, is harmful to ourselves, to others, and that distances us from God. God never distances himself from us, But we, through the poor use of our freedom, can distance ourselves from him. But even when we do that, when we're like to use one of the Lord's parables, the sheep that wanders off, what does the shepherd do? goes in pursuit until he finds the lost one to bring him back. We're continuing with the story of uh, Samuel, of Saul, of David. Now David, who had reigned for eight years as the king or the chieftain, if you will, of his own tribe, Judah, in the city of Hebron. Now the other tribes from the north come to him and plead that he would become king over all of the tribes. And David agrees. And he reigned for 40 years over all of Israel. And having been called to kingship by the Lord, is given a promise that his dynasty will be everlasting. And it is from David, from his flesh, that our Lord finally comes to be that everlasting King. Our Lord who used his human freedom always to choose what is good. To choose death for our sake because his Father had made that the means by which the divine love would show itself and be communicated to poor sinners in the most powerful way to free us from captivity to sin and fear of death. We hear how David conquers the stronghold of Zion, which is Jerusalem, and it becomes now not only his capital, but the holy city where God's temple will be built. And we are told at the end of this passage, David grew steadily more powerful for the Lord of hosts was with him. More powerful because of his faith in God, the use of his freedom to align his will with the divine will. Francis de Sales, a remarkable, remarkably gifted man with a remarkably charitable heart. He was absolutely committed and zealous in his duties as priest and, and as bishop, constantly preaching the faith in a time where the faith was being openly challenged. But in a situation of division where, and we see it in our own day, people be can become very angry, dismissive of others who do not agree with them, 
even violent in opposing others. Francis was gentle. He simply preached the gospel in its integrity and allowed grace to gently enter into the hearts of his hearers. And in the province of Annecy, where he lived, close to Geneva, which had become, which had embraced uh, Protestantism, where Francis was allowed to be active and present among the people, Protestantism disappeared. The Catholic faith was reaffirmed. How gentle God is with us. Therefore, how gentle we must be with ourselves and with one another. Francis says, when we find ourselves falling into sin, even serious sin, we should not be violent against ourselves, filled with hatred and self-condemnation, but rather turn our eyes to Jesus, to his gentle healing heart. Get up, confess our sins, and go forward to use our freedom well. Let us stand. Through the intercession of St. Francis de Sales, whom we honor today, let us pray for the church to which he devoted his life. Lord, for all bishops and pastors, grant them the gifts of discernment and charity in all their decisions, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, Lord. For all spiritual directors, grant them the insight to put their wisdom at the service of gospel life, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. For all religious communities who draw their inspiration from St. Francis de Sales, grant them a fervent life of prayer and good works for the sake of your kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. For peace in the world and the protection of our servicemen and women and first responders. For peace in Eastern Europe and Ukraine, for all those who have fallen and for the consolation of their families, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord, for God's blessings of unity and peace upon all marriages and families, for an abundance of vocations to the priest, the diaconate, and consecrated life, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord, for God's blessings upon our parish and all of our parish apostolates, that receiving the grace of God to lead us on the path of truth and goodness and gentleness, we may bear fruit for the new evangelization. We pray to the Lord, grant our prayer, O Lord, for all those who are burdened by any need, for the sick and dying, the homeless and unemployed, for widows and orphans, refugees, immigrants and migrants, for victims of war, violence, natural disasters, persecutions and human exploitation, for all those who are weighed down by addictions or chronic pain or mental illness, for all the suffering poor, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord, for all those who have died in the hope of resurrection, especially among our family, friends, and benefactors, and for the repose of the soul of our parishioner, Patrick O'Brien, whose funeral mass will be celebrated this morning, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord, for the special prayers which we bring before the Lord this day. O God of justice and mercy, you guided St. Francis de Sales in promoting the full life of the church in times of uncertainty and controversy. Through his intercession, continue to renew the church today to seek the peace of your kingdom for all people. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water, one may become to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Now, 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart may be accepted by you. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Through the saving sacrifice which we offer you, O Lord, kindle in our hearts that divine fire of the Holy Spirit with which you wonderfully inflamed the most gentle soul of St. Francis de Sales. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And this Mass is being offered for the repose of the soul of John Nguyen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus, your Son. In him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in his fullness. For though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself, and by the blood of his cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore he has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey him has become the source of eternal salvation. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Wilton our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. Francis de Sales, St. Hugh, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, <coughs> Lord we pray, from every evil. 
graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Blessed is that servant whom the Lord finds awake when he comes and knocks at the gate. body of Christ, the 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 body of Christ.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that through the sacrament we have received, we may imitate on earth the charity and meekness of St. Francis de Sales, and so attain, like him, the glory of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. St. Joseph, pray for us.